Good day. My name is Susanne Grobler. I'm a physiotherapist. I work in the private sector out of hospital setting and I'm making this video from my surgery in Pretoria during winter 2021. Gauteng is heading for a third wave and people are sick. It might be that you've recently been diagnosed being infected with the COVID-19 virus or you suspect you have it. You're at home in isolation and you wonder how on earth you're going to get through this. For most people, the anxiety around the sickness is worse than the sickness itself. But a small percentage of people progress to serious sickness. So if you wish, I volunteer to assist you with a bit of knowledge in understanding the immune system and also recognizing the red flags. Should you be part of the small percentage of people, when do you need to get specialized medical help sooner rather than later? So this video will cover a few basic principles. Breathing exercise, how to rest your body, positioning how to rest your body, management of anxiety, how to sleep better, and also how to recognize, as I said, the red flags. When do you need hospitalization? So here we go. A virus infection is like a bunch of pirates coming in from the sea. The immune system are the soldiers on the beach. And all our systems are the villages with the villagers inside, inland. So this can be seen as your brain, and your gut, and your lungs, and your skeleton, and your muscles. So, in order to support the immune system to be effective in stopping the virus from invading the villages, we need to understand how to rest the needs of the villagers, but also how to support the immune system in their activities on the speech front. What you can measure, you can manage. So, I suggest for the time that you're sick, you prepare an Excel spreadsheet. You add on the first column all the dates of since onset of symptoms. The next few columns you add on all your measurements. You can add on columns for symptoms as they come and they go, just with ticks. And the last column can be the management of the, of the measurements that you've made initially. The first most, most important one is temperature. I think all of you have seen this one. Make sure at the back you measure human temperature and not surface temperature. Best place to do this is in the ear. Um, and record twice a day, we would like to see a temperature of below 37.3. If you do not have a thermometer like that, this one is available at your local pharmacy for less than 20 rand. The way to do it is under your tongue for two minutes, maybe under your arm for two minutes. Um, YouTube will teach you how to read this one and record twice a day. Another one is the oximeter. Oximeter works like this. So we would like to see an oxygen reading above 94% and a heartbeat below 94. So this is an indication of the percentage of oxygen that you have in your fingers. Take this reading after you've been sitting for five minutes, maybe doing your breathing exercises. After you've climbed the flight of stairs or maybe you went for a shower, it might be that your oxygen is showing that your muscles came to ask for oxygen and the brain said that oh, we need this. So that's why the the heartbeat went up. The last one, uh, I want, uh, second last one is, is COVID is a sickness of dry cough. Few people really cough productively, but if you're one of them, you, should need, you need to know how it looks like. So a cough means, <coughs> sorry for that. So now that you've got it, open up and have a look. If this is white, throw it away, you're okay. But if you see a discoloration of yellow or brown or green, you know you're fighting an infection, contact your doctor. If you see blood on this white tissue, you go to casualties, this is a red flag. And then lastly is the color of your urine. So the immune system functions optimally in a well hydrated body. So we would like to see the color of your urine as light as possible. So should you have dehydration or maybe add it on diarrhea, I think I suggest you add on a bit of rehydrate and drink water as much as possible to support the immune system while you're healing. So on breathing, we all think we know how to breathe. We have been breathing since birth. 
Let me teach you a nice way how you can assist your immune system with a better quality of breathing. In other words, in assisting the immune system with more oxygen while you heal from the COVID-19 infection. So most of us, specifically women, are used to breathing more in the upper part of the chest, more into the ribcage here, not really moving the stomach. The best way to breathe is to use the lower part of your body where I place the towel around the ribcage of my skeleton. It looks like this. So when we breathe more into the diaphragm, more into the stomach, we get better expansion of the lung tissue and we get better quality of oxygen in the blood supply towards the rest of the body. I'm going to teach you a few breathing exercises myself, but I also want to entice you to have a look on your Play Store. There are a lovely bunch of breathing apps that you have to choose from. So now that the skeleton has shown us where we should breathe, let us do it on our body. So I place the towel around the lower part of my ribcage. It looks like this from the back. Here we go. And I say, I want to inhale where this ring of towel is. Now, ex breathing exercises is in through the nose, Maybe you can hold your breath while and out through the mouth. So when you inhale, maybe three seconds, you can hold your breath a second or two and exhale a six seconds. So the focus is on exhaling every last bit of air in your lungs so you create space in which you can quickly inhale but you focus on the exhale. It's an extremely powerful exercise to manage anxiety as well. So, when we just breathe in sitting, it looks like this. A wide chest and I even tighten the ring of towel. You can also combine this with chest movement. So, hands behind the head. I'm going to show you from the side. Inhale, looking up and exhale, flexing forward. From the side, you can also do it, inhale this way, so you lengthen and inhale into this, this lung, and exhale to the middle. Same thing to this side, inhale, stretch this side, air right this lung, and out. Then you can also combine this with rotation. So I sit and my knees stay still, but I twist my body to the side on inhalation and out to the middle and I repeat this to this side and to the other side. Breathing exercises can be done as much as possible. You can do this hourly, you can do this hourly, you can do this 10 minutes in a row. Check your saturation, we're going to talk about the oximeter and see how this improves the quality of oxygen in your blood. One of the most important things we can do to assist our immune system while we heal from a virus infection is by sleeping. So by sleeping we mean 10 hours a night, maybe 2 or 3 in the mornings, maybe repeat this in the afternoon. So really shut down the needs of all your systems so that your immune system is strong enough to fight against the virus infection. Positioning for sleeping, um, we have a choice of course, sleeping on the back or the stomach or the left or the right side. So whatever is comfortable I think is good. But if possible then you can choose to sleep on your stomach, it will be good for your lungs. I'm going to show you just now how to do this. Sleeping on your stomach is basically just lying on your stomach of course. So you lie without a pillow, you can place your arms at any place where it's comfortable for you. If this is causing back pain, you can offload your back a bit by placing a support in, still without a pillow. And of course repeat this to the other side as well. In this position, enjoy a, a nice podcast, maybe listen to music. And by now you know where to breathe. We want to breathe with a wide ribcage. 
And in this position, you can also exercise your ankles to prevent blood clots. We've all heard about blood clots pre-COVID. Blood clots is, uh, are common, is a common complication in health. After you've been traveling long distance, or maybe you are recovering after a fracture or an operation, um, the advice here is move but don't get tired. We luckily know when you're inactive, the hiding place for blood clots are in your calf muscles. So flex and extend your feet, walk on your toes, walk on your heels. Walking around in the house is good. Maybe watch out to what's going on in the garden or um, uh, fill up the bell for the dog outside. So move, but don't get tired. We often see that anxiety and insomnia is highly associated with being infected with acute um, COVID-19 virus infection. I'm a physiotherapist and not a psychologist, so I'm just going to provide you with a few practical tips. So one of them is to focus your mind and contemplate thoughts in your inner circle. In other words, actions that you can actually physically execute. For example, decide which song you would like to listen to and listen to this song and enjoy it and if possible sing with it. Decide to which loving family member you want to chat. Maybe would you like to sit in the garden, lie in bed or sit in your sitting room. Um, stay away from social media if possible and stay away from a circle in which you cannot physically execute the task. For example, contemplating stress and panic on another continent. Um, insomnia at night, have you ever wondered why not all the birds wake up at the same time? So lying and waiting for the birds to start to sing and then go and Google why are not all the birds singing at the same time? If you seriously have a problem with anxiety, please contact your psychologist. I'm sure they can assist you online while you're sick. And as far as I'm concerned, maybe breathing exercises might be your best friend here. What you can measure, you can manage. So we've spoken about measurement and management in terms of breathing and sleeping and hydrating and the power of your mind. But let's talk about the lungs per se. So the first important thing I want to teach you today is to prepare a blow bottle. So this was a covering bottle. I took a small screwdriver and I made two holes. One is for a pipe, pipe from the hardware store and the other one is for air to escape. And it works this way. So the way in which you use this is you inhale but you exhale till the end into this bottle. Repeat and exhale and the focus is on exhaling. Do 10 times, rest 5 minutes and repeat another 10 times. And I do not want to limit you to say you need to do this every hour. Do this as frequently as possible with your other breathing exercises. Your bottle is your bottle. So I want to advise that you wash your bottle um, maybe every evening with a bit of warm water and soap, maybe rinse it with a bit of cheek. Um, you do not share this bottle and the end of your sickness, you throw this bottle away. Um, COVID is a sickness of dry cuffs, but sometimes people have a bit of a productive cough. A nebulizer might be of help. With nebulizing, we always advise the person with COVID to do nebulizing outside and to use a mask while you do it to limit exposure to people who do not have COVID at that stage. We add a saline into the uh, nebulizer, it's a salty sterile solution, and the way in which you do this is adding a mask. And by now you know how to do your breathing exercises. So you just put the pipe in under the mask and you do your breathing exercises. There we go. So it's in. And if you cough during this, it's good. Do I need to go to the hospital and when? This is a very serious question. Luckily, only a small percentage of people who are infected with the COVID-19 virus develop serious sickness. But if you're part of this small group, please get medical assistance, specialized medical assistance sooner rather than later. So I'm going to discuss five red flags. And we said what you can measure, you can manage. Let's have a look at your scorecard. Uncontrolled diabetes. The second one is dehydration. 
If your home coping strategy of drinking water with rehydrate didn't get you to a point where you urinate frequently, preferably a light color of urine, it is a red flag. The third one is temperature. If you're running up to 38, 39 and your home coping strategy of drinking paracetamol doesn't help, it's a red flag. The fourth one is coughing up blood. There's no home coping strategy. This is a red flag. And the last one is the oximeter's readings. So if your saturation or your oxygen measurement dipped into the 80s, I hope not the 70s, and your heartbeat lifted to 100, 120, I hope not higher, you know you're in trouble. This is a red flag. Do not despair if you do not have an oximeter. If a person is having difficulty to say that okay, using all the muscles, flaring the nostrils, a little bit blue around the mouth, you know they've got an elephant on the chest. If they can still talk a sentence from beginning to end like I'm doing now, chances that the oxygen is good, is, is good, is good. So what is your home coping strategy to lift this elephant? Is your breathing exercises, lying on your stomach, doing your breathing exercises on your stomach, blowing your bottle. Should you decide by looking at the five red flags or you still just feel uncomfortable, it is time to go to the hospital's casualties. Pack your bags and contemplate your transport. If possible, be transported with a COVID, by a COVID positive person and wear your mask in the car. If it's a COVID negative driver, you expose the COVID negative driver to the virus that you've got. In the hospital, you're not, or in casualties, you're not guaranteed of admission. The hospitals are full and allocation of available beds is prioritized. At least the doctors will get a good look at you. Should a doctor then um, suggest admission, please smile. You are there in time. Chances are that it will be good for you. The doctors and my colleagues in the hospital, the nurses and all the staff are very tired, but trust me, they are extremely focused. There are a lot of lessons learned by now. It's the third wave. There's a bit of research. So this time should be good for you. The knowledge in this video is what is available to me now in South Africa, Pretoria, in the winter of 2021 as a physiotherapist. <clears throat> it might change in future, in future. Should you have any other questions on medication and vaccination, please contact your medical doctor. But I trust and I pray that the knowledge that I've given you will help you on your home coping strategy, management of all your measurements, and to know when a red flag has been lifted. So, a last note, if you can still enjoy the flavor of your food, a good curry maybe, a cup of coffee, a glass of red wine, embrace. Chances are good, more or less around day five of onset of symptoms, you might lose this. And you do not know if it's gonna come back. Mine didn't come back. So it's not the end of the world. From now on, a rotten egg won't bother you anymore. And the people around you, smelly feet and farting, also won't be a problem. I just want to advise. Do you, should you have to judge the leftovers in the refrigerator? Ask assistance. All the best to you, your family, your friends and your colleagues.